amazing. I just cupped in. I'm making a programme today, pole fishing with meat, meat as a hook bait. And I just put two cupfuls of, of cubes of, of meat, that sort of stuff in. Just two cupfuls and it probably took about 60 seconds to get my first bite. So that's good. I'm here today at Maver Larford Lakes. It's a beautiful day, the sun is the sun is shining, it's late spring, it's very, very warm, probably 22, 23 degrees, so it's gorgeous weather. Now this complex of lakes, the one I'm fishing today is, is called the Match Lake. This is a lot of, well, it's got big carp, but also a lot of F1s, which are a, a cross between a, a common carp and a crucian carp. I'm just fishing just on the bottom by some lily pads. And straight away I'm into a fish. But it's a really fight. Well, you never know what you're going to catch here. Normally they're carp, but you never know what sort they're going to be. This feels like a good one. Now, the complex of lakes here, there's this lake, as I said, was the match lake. And then you've got further across, you've got the specimen lake. That's got some really big fish in it. And then the arena, which is sort of an exhibition type lake, but an another match lake all full of fish, all good condition as well. I so say, really got a beautiful day for fishing today. I love this water. This is, Larford Lakes are, are quite close to Stourport. I suppose the biggest major city would be, would be Worcester, but very, very close to Stourport. Not really near to my home, it's quite a drive, but I just love fishing here. It just didn't take long to catch. Yeah, it's an F1. You can always tell them they look just like... They just look just like a, a common carp. When you first hook them, you think, oh, that's a common carp. But they're not. Oh, that hook came out. That's good. Saves me unhooking it. But they're not. They're, a, they're just a cross between a crucian and a common. They fight really hard when you, when you, just when you get them in the net and go to lift them out. But look, look at the sun glistening off the flanks of that fish. Beautiful fish, probably about one and a half to two pounds, but lovely condition. And you can tell an F1 because if you look by its mouth there, it's got just a little stub for a barbel. You know carp, they usually have quite long barbels there. And there's just nothing, just a little tiny stub, which means an F1 in superb condition. What a great start to the day. Well, that was good to start with, wasn't it? I'll show you how I, I fed initially. I put two pots in, but I'll just put one extra in. Just of this, I've chopped this meat up into small cubes. Just fill that pot up with it. I'm, I'm trying to keep the fish on the bottom. It's very, very warm. There's lots of people here today. It's a lovely fishery, so. So I'm going to feed with a pot, not so often, so a big pot down on the bottom. So out and I'm fishing just off the edge of those lilies. Whenever you want to keep fish down, then, then sort of large amount of baits, but not, not that often. And I've picked that lily just on the end there. See that one there, just a fish, just off the edge, hoping that the fish are gonna creep out of that cover and take the bait. There'll be a few fish take those on the drop, but when you, when you put that many in together, quite a few of them will get to the bottom. So they're drifting down. And I'm fishing at the moment with the same size cube of meat on the hook. I've got two different flavours here and at the moment I'm fishing with a with a garlic flavour, flavour sort of like a sausage it is. But a fairly light in colour. Burying that burying that hook inside the meat, it's it's quite firm that meat, but just bringing the point out. Can you see that point just coming just coming out on the, on the outside there. Just like if I get a bite, I'll hook a fish. I've plumbed the depth and I'm just a little bit over depth. I'll probably go through that with you as well. OK, 
Keep that rig in the water when you ship out. Watch just as you bring your pole off the end of your roller. And then we're fishing just off the edge of those lilies there. I'm dropping that piece of meat down just off the edge of the lilies. And usually when you start to fish, there'll probably be a few of those smaller fish and there's a chance of catching a bigger carp later, I think, if we go on to bigger cubes of meat. It's a bite straight away. So there's fish down there already and I've, you know, it's only been a few minutes since I've fed. Might need to take one shot off of that float, I think. It's a nice thick bristle. When I'm fishing with meat, meat is a big heavy bait, so you don't have to use a fine sensitive float. Lots of signs of fish there. Probably line bites some of them, but I'm only just lifting into it. If you get a good bite, you usually hook the fish straight away. But you can imagine that lots of fish all around that feed area. And oh, <laughs> that, was a, that was a proper bite. The, the pole went down. I missed the fish, but it was a proper bite. It took the bait. That was, that was good, and it scared all the other fish. So that was, a, that was a proper bite that I didn't even have to strike at, really. That's how it, that's how it normally is. Put another piece of meat on there. You don't hit every bite, of course. Same, just bury that cube of meat. Bring the hook out. It's fairly light, that garlic. It's a garlic sausage and it's a very light in colour, so the fish see it easy. It's quite a soft meat. It usually catches all types of fish. Just off the edge there again. Just near those lilies. You can imagine, fish love a little bit of cover as well, and you have that big lily bed there is giving the fish good cover. Ah, there. See, it's a nice thick bristle. And quite often you need to bring, just bring the, the bait to the attention of the fish. Just lift it and drop it over the baited area. Just missed that last fish and it might have, just might have scared them because it, it sort of was hooked and then it was off. Hooked and off, off immediately. I think I'll have to feed lots today because the fish will be... I think they will clean that bait up very, very quickly. I'm just dropping it down. It's easy when you've got those lilies as a marker because you know exactly where you put your bait in. Sometimes you can come a bit closer to the lilies and get a bite, sometimes a bit further away. The fish will probably try to head into those lilies. It's so warm today, they've come right up in the water, the fish. You can see them in, in sort of, it, almost on the surface, in amongst those lily pads. Oh, and there's one on. Just lifted, you notice how I just lifted into that fish? And it's on. Oh, good strong elastic in there. Like equivalent to about a number 16, because there is some, there is some big carp in here. If you just lift into the fish, they're not always sure that they've been hooked, so we just lifted straight into that fish. That will start to go mad in a minute. <laughs> That's nice, strong elastic. They do fight so differently, some of these fish. This is just a small one, I think. Probably a pound, pound and a half. Look at that. That one come in so easily, and they're strange. They do, they do vary a lot. It probably didn't even know it's hooked, that one. It's over a pound. Oh, that strong elastic really cope with it. Just like the last one, the hook flicks out. When you're using, you use, always use barbless hooks, they come out so easily. Oh, yeah. Another one of those. It's got a bit of a fat stomach, that happens to these quite a bit. A little bit of a, a fat stomach. I think they just feed and feed and feed. But typical big fan tail. Lovely F1. When fishing this, in this style with meat, I like to use, and you're putting fairly big volumes of bait in, I like to use a meat cutter. This cuts every cube of meat to the same size. And I'm using a mixture of garlic slicing sausage, 
Mmm, it is garlicky too. And if I put those in first, the garlic slicing sausage, they push down into the cutter itself and then you have to push this cutter two ways. So it's got an end which you just push onto, you push down, so easy to do. That pushes the meat through one way and then you turn it over like that. So the meat has all been, all been sliced through there. Then you turn it over and then you can slice it. I usually, let's put my tub there, it's better to do it on. Fits over your maggot, maggot tub. Then turn it over, this is a smaller size, and just push it down that way, like that. And you get all your, as easy as that, you get all your meat perfectly, perfectly cubed. They're just, they're just, some of them stick together, but they're perfectly cubed. So you get all those. So I've, so I've got a mixture now. Let's put the other one in as well. Let's put this. The other one I'm using is a Van der Nijm one. It's called Nice and Spicy. Pull that out of the tin. So then there's a, there's a, I've, I've got a mixture of dark and light meats. That drops in there almost perfectly. Same thing again, just push it through. That's how easy it is. But when, when you're fishing this sort of venue, you can probably get through two or three tins of meat and two or three of those sausages as well. So many fish here. Just drop that over the bait tub. Use your other one just to push through. And you've got some dark meat as well. So you've got a mixture of, of dark and Skim the rest of those off. You've got a mixture of dark and light meats. Let me show you that. And all, if you look at it, it's all perfectly cubed. Some of them just need breaking apart, but as soon as it goes in the water, it breaks anyway. A little big slice there, but it's as quick as that. All perfectly cubed and ready. I fed just before I done that, so I think I'm ready to go straight out again with that. And that light sausage seems to be good at the moment, so I haven't even tried the dark one, that's probably just as good. The dark one's a bit harder, a bit tougher meat, so you probably use that when you're going on to, on to bigger fish. I can go straight out over the feed. Take that tub off there. And hopefully there should be some fish waiting for me. So if I just fed, just fed, just before I started to, to show you about meat cutting. And when, when you fish in this way, you know you're right over that feed area. And hopefully the fish are all settled on the bottom. Oh, it went straight away then. Just lift it into it though, drop it straight back. Quite often they'll watch the bait as it goes down through the water. So they see the bait dropping down through the water and then just follow it down and take it. But quite often they're going by smell. See that little dig as the fish was nuzzling the bait then? Didn't take it though. So a little lift and drop, keep, it, keep everything. When the fish are moving, you can move the bait as well. You know the fish are active and whizzing around and looking, looking for something. There's a fish there now, just nuzzling the bait. If it goes quiet, I know there's a big fish in my peg. Drop down again. So easy, this style of fishing. Just waiting on a big bed of bait for the fish to take. Letting it drift about. Oh, there's lots of action, lots of signs that fish are there. Can you imagine them feeding, taking all those loose offerings? Now they're taking the bait exactly the same size as I'm feeding at the moment, so it's no different, but they'll be pretty used to it once they start to get to, to eat it. They'll be pretty used to that feed. It's enough, tough enough to stay on the hook. You drop back in, see the float moving all the time. 
Just see it pulling down a bit there. You can see the fish on and I'm lifting and dropping it again. There's loads of fish there. Just a matter of when one gets hold of that bait and whizzes off with it. Lots of action. Lots of indications that there's fish there, so you don't need to worry. As long as you see your float moving, you know that there's fish down on the bottom and over your feed. And then it's in. <laughs> you don't have to worry. Eventually it will go. Just got the fish feeding where you want them, that's the important thing. Once you get them there, then the rest is easy. You can have a good day's fishing, just feeding properly, just feeding correctly, fishing right on your bait makes so much difference. Always think about that. Think about the way that you're feeding. Remember that fish are shy, wild creatures. You have to overcome their fear, get them into that feeding area, and that's when you have your really good days fishing. Feels like another F1 carp, this. They're all good quality fish anyway, with the odd big one will be. I just saw a lovely flash of the tail. Look how they scrap when they're close in. <laughs> it's not a particularly big one, this one, just over a pound, I should think, but look at it fighting. Lovely looking fish, though. I think those big, that big tail, once it really starts going and flapping, it makes all the difference. There. Lovely, lovely big carp. That is a, really is a, a beautiful, oh, you can't really, can't really hold them. I try to hold them sometimes for camera, but they really, they really start flapping then. It's going to jump in a minute. There. Beautiful fish. I'm using a, a size 18 Fox. It's a strong barbless carp hook, but it's a big hook. It, you, hook sizes, it, an 18 you think, oh, that's quite a small hook. But if you look at this, this is probably more like a 14, so it's quite a big hook. And three and a half pound hook length, which is 012 millimeter. It's a high tech line. Fox once again, and it's clear, so the fish can't see. It's a clear, very soft, supple, it's a beautiful line for hook lengths and main line. It's a, a high tech line, pre-stretched, so it's much, much stronger than normal monofilament. And then, just here, where I've got this, I've got this number, number 10 stot shot there, I've got a small, let me pull that away so you can see, I've got a small knot just there, that's a twisted Figure of eight, it's my own knot, I think. Nobody seems to know the name of it. I call it a twisted figure of eight, but it's about a 95% knot strength. And I tuck that shot right against that knot just to get this, it never tangles. It's, I find it much better than fishing with two loops. And I've got the main bulk of shot there, which is six number 10 stock leads there as a, as a little bulk. And the main line is 0.14, which is about four and a half pounds, so it's a good strong line. Up to the float itself, with the, the float is, as I said earlier, I don't mind using a, a, a thick bristle for meat. You set it on the bottom, meat's a reasonably heavy bait, and the, the, it's not like fishing with, a, with one single maggot. You can use a, a thicker bristle so that you can see it. It's called an MP7, it's a fox float, again, just a small compact float with a carbon stem and a fairly 
you know, very, very thick nylon bristle and a very, very strong eye there. When you're fishing for carp, you need a strong eye in there, otherwise it goes into bolsa, so it needs to be really deep. And the, on these floats, I find they're very, very tough for that. And about from, from the float to the, to the connector there is about probably the span of my hand, which is nine inches. That would be the span of my hand, somewhere around that, just so I can lift quite easily into the fish without, if you've got too much line, you, you'll miss bites. You can go shorter sometimes on really calm days. Then a normal connector to, it's equivalent to about a size 14 elastic. This is a hollow, fox hollow. It's red and it's through two sections, but it, it'll handle big fish up to 10 or 12 pounds or more, but also come out on the smaller fish as well. So it's, it's really forgiving. And because I'm using a barbless hook, if, if, if the elastic isn't right, you can bump out of every fish, but you'll find today that, that we'll hardly lose a fish, maybe just the odd one or two, that's all. So it's a matter of getting the, the elastic and the line and everything to, to be right together to make sure you don't lose fish. It's called balanced tackle. And let's I, I, I just put in some bait again, just to make sure. I just feel the fish are really, are really getting through it. There's loads of fish in here, and I can imagine every time that I go out and cup a, a load of bait in, I think the fish just go in like giant vacuum cleaners and hoover it all up. I mean, this venue is an exception to the rule because there's so many fish here. It's so prolific, such a... If you want to come and start and learn and practice different methods, this is the venue. You're guaranteed to catch carp. Just dropping that gently in. I just took a shot off of that float so it sits up a little bit, that's it. So it's just sitting up a bit more. See the float just dug under there. I didn't strike, didn't look like a bite to me. As I say, it's not really a strike, it's more a lift. If you strike too hard, you'll find that all that happens is you'll strike your bait off. If you just lift into it, and also scare the fish, because if they're line bites and you strike, the fish feel the line against their bodies and they shoot off quickly, so, and scare everything around. So, but if you just lift into it, then you'll find it's much better. Just a little bit of a waiting game as the fish come round and they're searching for the bait. You see the float then, just dip a little bit. There it goes again, just dipped a bit. Bait's still on though. Just as the fish, they almost play around with it, play like a game of football as they, as they push against it. A little bit suspicious sometimes, that dipped straight away then. Don't always presume that's a bite though. Quite often it can just be fish brushing the line. Particularly when you get loads of fish in one tight area, which we will have done now. You can see the lily pads moving, so you know there's lots of fish around that area. It really is a beautiful day for fishing as well. Just a teeny bit of cloud. Just calm conditions. I know what will happen, if a big fish moves in it will go quiet, but there's still plenty of, of other fish there, I think. Just watch that float all the time as it goes down and up. And just look for that proper bite there, just to lift. You notice how I just lift it into the fish, just lift it up. Almost doesn't know it's hooking and steer it away, get it out of the crowd. <laughs> oh, that one might have been, might have been foul hooked, you know, it just, it, it can happen, maybe not, but there's loads of fish there, just loads of fish waiting, and that's the problem, when you get lots of fish very, very close together, you get these line bites, that's, we have to be really careful when you strike. Well, it's not a strike, it's just a lift. You still have to lift into the fish. 
keep that bait. As long as you ship out, when you're shipping out, just keep that, that rig in the water. You won't tangle. Sometimes you need to fish round the edges when there really is a lot of fish on your feed. You can fish just on the edges of your bait. You can see all the time the fish are there. It's not long since I've put a big pot of food in, so they might just be settling down on it. And as they eat it, and yours becomes the only one or two pieces left, then you're more chance of catching. And because we've, we haven't been fishing that long, the swim is just gradually building up. Just gradually building up. Look at that float, just, just moving. A... Just leave it there, let the fish take the bait. Well, that didn't take long. Straight in again. All the same stamp of fish at the moment though, but they're really coming over that feed area. It's working perfectly. I've got good, that line is good, strong line. So plenty able to handle these fish, but it needs to be that elastic stretched out there. Trying to keep that fish away from, they try to go towards those lilies. Oh, the elastic is working perfectly. So I say, it's equivalent to about a number, probably about a number 14, I should think, elastic. Something like that. This one's fighting well. All these lovely quality F1 carp. <laughs> they really do fight. Terrific fishing, but that hook, it's big hook. Lovely that I can use that. As I say, it's more like a, a 14, really. I know it says it's an 18. <laughs> oh, this one's really fighting well. Oh, I thought I'd hit the net then. <laughs> oh. oh, it doesn't want to stop. Oh, just a nice fish. It's over two pound, that fish, I should think. Really is a very solid fish. That hook come out again, I think it did. Hooks all the time comes out of the out of the fish. Might even. Let me have a look. Oh no, it's, no, it's there. Just, just inside its, only hook just inside its lip. I thought the hook had come out. Hmm. Slip him straight in the net. Beautiful, that is a lovely fish. Probably about two pound. Whew, just non-stop action. I love to use hollow elastic when I'm carp fishing. I said that. And you need to tie a special knot. If you're using a connector, you need to tie a very small knot. I'll show you how to do it. But this is, this is the type of elastic I like to use. This is a fox fluoro carp pole elastic. It's color coded. It has the size of the elastic and the equivalent, it says 10 plus, that's the equivalent sort of to, to your old elastic type. But it, it's always much more forgiving than normal solid elastic and much stronger. The one I'm using today is, about, is a red, it's about equivalent to a 14. And the connector needs to be a good size connector because you have to get the, I'll show you what I mean, you have to get the Elastic has to go through that back hole. It wants to be a fairly tight fit through that back hole on the connector. And then all you do is a, it's, it's a three turn blood knot. That's all elastic digs into itself. So you don't have to worry about tying your special knots. You just need a small knot that will dig into itself. So you put, thread your elastic through the end there, twist it round and then all you do is three turns, one, so look, one, two, three turns, and then tuck it through that tuck it through that hole there. 
So tuck it through there and then I usually wet it a little bit. Just wet it slightly and then if you find if you pull it, just pull it tight. Really pull it tight. Just keep tugging it, just really so it digs into itself, that's important. So you, you feel it go really solid, it digs into itself and you've got a lovely small very strong knot, just pull it round there like that and then I test it, yeah that's good it won't slip, trim it off very neatly like that, just trim it off nice and neatly and what has to happen is the, the connector, that back connector has to clip over so it clips over there to hide the knot, it leaves this front free, let's put my clip my, lots of people don't do this, you need to make sure that connector, sometimes you have to use your teeth to do it, clips up. So to put the line over first, that's on, then you pull that small connector up, then you have to clip this so it goes click, so that this collar here can't slide back. You can see it's perfectly neat, tucked in there, all I, all I need to do now is, I slackened that elastic off a bit, all I need to do now is, is to tighten up on the other end. I've got a, I've got a bung with a, with a winder on it, so I'll just tighten that up to get the tension right around that winder. I can tighten it or, or slacken off as, as, as I need to, I like to do that. Just let's tighten that up a little bit. That should be all right, I think. Loads of people here chatting away today. It's, it's, it's packed, it's always packed with anglers. And that's it, that feels, that as long as that elastic goes back in, it's just gone back in there, just comes out, but it goes back in and it's fine. Are the fish still waiting for me? I bet they are. I did sneak out a little bit more feed just before I started, so just before I started to chat about this, this elastic, you need to keep feeding. There's so many fish here, you need to keep feeding all the time. Just off the end. Such simple fishing really, isn't it? Just two or three tins of meat. Cut the bait in in a good tight area and then drop over that feed area. Watch for your little bites and your little pulls. Here, a fish has found it. Do you see how it moved then? The fish found it. Just knock it about sometimes. They don't always take it straight away. Look at that, just a little dig again. Notice I just lift into it. I know the bait's still on, so I've just lifted into it. <laughs> Float disappeared completely then. That might have been a line bite though. There's fish jumping everywhere today. I think it's the first really warm day we've had for quite a while, so. And this temperature's really going up quickly in the lake, which makes a difference. <laughs> I felt that fish, the pole, did you see the pole tip actually went took, you could, you could almost hear it. You wouldn't need to look at your float sometimes, you just hear it go knock. Just feel it on the pole. Just hear the knock as the fish pulls down and tightens up on the elastic. Quite often it's just that elastic, the tension on that as the fish pulls and the line stops and it goes to pull the elastic out, that's what hooks the fish. Just need to lift into it. Fantastic. All the time just looking for, looking for bites, but not, not doing too much to it, just letting the fish settle and look for the bait. And then waiting, is there a big one there now? Just waiting for that to whiz away. They should be settled there, but it could well have eaten all my bait and gone. 
That's how quick they can consume when there's a big volume of fish. And as the water warms up, of course, they feed more. In the winter, they don't feed quite as much, but as it gets warmer, they feed more and more and more. I know there's fish there because I can see those. Just the signs all the time round the float. And I'm in again. It is just so easy sometimes. Oh. <laughs> just non-stop these fish. That's good, that good, that's nice strong elastic, big elastic. Just a small F1 this one I think. Still fighting well, but even on small fish you can see how that elastic comes out. Just, it's about a pound this one. Took a fair sized lump of meat though, off the bottom, just lifted into it. It's another one where the hooks come straight out, flick straight out of it. That's quite a small fish. Small fish with a massive, massive, I say small, it's still a pound. But look at the size of that tail compared to the size of the fish, like a big fantail F1 with the sun glistening off it, beautiful. Lovely condition, beautiful black eye. Look at the eye, just really jet black. I really love these fish. Well, that's just a change of a fish. Small mirror carp. There. You just see the, the uneven scales, so you can tell it's a mirror carp. Hook perfectly though. Just in the lip. Fighting more with my hand than when I was playing. There's lots of fish there now, so I'm going to try to use a, a larger piece of meat. I mean, I'm, normally I'm fishing with those small cubes, but let's try a, and just the same, I'll use that same garlic sausage, but just, it doesn't really matter what shape it is, just cut a larger chunk off. The small fish will still take it, but maybe there's, a, there's one or two. So any size, it doesn't have to be a dead square or... Fish don't know about that. But this, this will be a, a different size bait to what we're putting in, so... If there's any big fish there, they could well take it. A big chunk, and I'll, I can vary that. That's a, that's a fair size piece of bait. Good chunk of bait, hooked in. If there is a three or four pound carp, it's liable to take it. But those, those two pounders will take it as well. Might need to feed again. I fed again a little while ago, but let's just see if they're there. Just drop it off the big, imagine that big chunk. A little bit of weed there, I think. Just drop it off the end and watch. Can be a little bit more of a waiting game when you're doing this, but other times it can race off. If there's, if there's one big one there, it'll, it'll spot that larger piece of meat and take it. Just got slightly heavier line and a, and a bigger hook. Could even go bigger. Depends on, on what size meat you're using. You can use a really... <laughs> Just went under then and up. 
The fish nose in the bait. Imagine that one big lump of meat there amongst the smaller pieces. And just looking for the, trying to sort out the slightly larger fish amongst them. The good thing about cutting it up, you can cut up all different sizes. You don't have to, if that bigger one doesn't work, try slightly smaller. Amazing sometimes on a really big piece of meat, if you're looking for really big fish, what they will take. You've only got to look at their mouth, but they're not, it's not quite as active as it was before, is it, on those smaller pieces, so. There's fish there nudging it. They've got to get it in their mouth, though. It's a big chunk of meat. It floats down quite slowly. A lot of fat in, in even that garlic sausage, quite a bit of fat, so it, so it drops through the water fairly slowly. But it's a big bait, so... The fish will sense it's there. It's just a matter of if there's a fish big enough to take that piece. I can't believe what took that, that bait. It's not really, well, it's a good fish, but it's not a massive fish. It took that big lump of meat. Amazing. I've got a good strong line and good elastic, so it's not a problem. It's just a normal size F1. I thought, I thought when the float went, it was going to be one of those big carp that are in here, but no, it's just a good size F1, but look at that. How did that get that big piece of luncheon meat in its, hook, in its mouth? Still more than a pound, but I just don't know. I don't think that piece of luncheon meat can fit in its mouth. <laughs> it's only a pound. Another one of those fish with a big, with a big fan tail. Just get the hook out. There. Fish here seem to, a little bit of blood coming out. Look at that. Massive lump of meat. Look at that enormous tail. He's a bit greedy. Well, it worked. Slightly, it was the same size fish. I think it's just a peg is just full on, but I'll try it again. And we've got that bigger rig on now, just a larger piece of meat. Take a little bit longer sometimes to, to get onto it. So a larger chunk. Probably if you look at that size that we were using there. So there's the size that we were using and now we've gone on to something probably three or four times the size. Three times the size, I should think. So a much, much bigger piece. Same meat though, that garlic sausage. Catch a lot of fish with that. I don't know why, why do fish love garlic? I quite like garlic, but sometimes I uh, don't like it when it's too strong, but fish seem to love it. Let's go on that feed area again. Just so easy to drop your bait on that area. Usually when you're fishing like this, as, as the, the evening wears on, as it gets late into the evening, you find the bigger fish, then move in. As soon as a big fish comes here, that would take it, definitely. Definitely take that and go roaring off. Just settled, and you'll see when a fish starts to to get near it, you'll see the float will bob up and down a little bit there. So you can see one or two fish getting excited around it. But quite often they can be smaller fish. So they can't get that, that piece into their mouth. Just have to wait a bit. 
shot under then. I didn't strike at it. It was a fish that could have banged the line. The bloke just shot under. Check my bait. Yeah, still there, that big lump of meat. Try and let the fish get a sight of that bait as it drops back through the water. Quite often a fish can see it just as it's falling through and grab it like that. He took it then. But they're just, I think they're just smaller fish that can't, just can't get the bait in the mouth. Keep trying to. If it was one of those tiny cubes, you'd be hooking fish every cast. Bigger piece of meat is, is working, but the fish seem to be a similar size. Just so many of those F1 carp in my peg. Oh. Well, this one's going a little bit, though. Still think it's an F1, though. But non-stop action, lots of fish. Just settling, quite easy, cupping in that bait. Oh. But don't seem to be any difference to the smaller pieces of bait. Oh, it's a lovely fish, though. Look at that. Beautiful fish. If you notice how some of them really fight hard, and I don't, I don't think that one knew it was hooked until it saw the net. Just saw me go to net it, and then it thought, oh, what's happening here? Oh, that looks a how beautiful looking fish. <laughs> All that meat they've been eating, they should be strong today. I'll keep cupping it in to keep them there. I just think there's so many there. Just see the hook look just in its lip. Reasonable size one, but probably a bit bigger than average than we've been catching, so it is working a little bit, that, the larger piece. See how they flick in the net, and you have to try to Try to stop them as soon as you can from flicking. And that hook's come out again. Brilliant, those hooks come out straight away. That's a lovely one, probably nearly, nearly two pound this one. Not quite such a fantail, there's definitely two different species, but these are strong. Look at that dorsal fin, just like the, the dorsal of a Crucian carp. Really is a lovely looking fish. I'm gonna go straight out and see if we can catch another one while they're there. I think I just put on a normal piece of meat this time. It didn't seem to make much difference, small or large, so I just put on a normal piece of meat. And I think we're getting near the end of the program as well. One one more fish will probably do it. But it just shows you what uh, you can catch with with meat, cubing up meat as a bait for the hook and also to feed with. Cupping in in one tight area to make sure that the fish are in that area. Watch it, you don't strike at everything because there's lots of fish there. We'll just go back on that small, I've got a slightly bigger hook but it's still completely buried into the meat, so the fish won't see it. Quite a strong hook length on this rig. You can just see the last little shot in a minute taken up. You see that float drop down a bit further. There. Just settled on that bed of feed. Waiting for the fish. Just have to wait a little while as you go in because there's a few fish and quite a bit of bait probably on the bottom. You have to wait while they mill round and find it. Oh dear. Just seem to be loads of fish out there today. This is a, it's a strange feeling fish, this one. But it'll be, I know it'll be another F1 because it's mainly all we've caught. Just seems to be a just a more dogged, slower fish. They do fight 
All of them fight different. They're more, you can just never tell. Some of them really scrap. Whether it's because they're males or females, I don't know, but some really fight hard. But lovely looking fish, big fish, I can just see it. Lovely fish. These are the perfect fish, really, for, for a commercial fishery because they feed all the year round. They feed in the winter. Unlike, unlike normal common carp, which stop feeding when the water temperature drops probably below about 38, these, these carry on feeding. Catch them in the coldest conditions. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I think there'll be time for another one yet. Perfectly, perfectly. Oh, they really do, really do start to scrap once you get hold of them. Perfectly lip hooked. Can't hold them up for the camera for long though. Lovely. Time I think for one more, just to show how this meat has really worked today. Let's put a small piece on. Bury it in. Don't think I've got... I'm almost fancy feeding again, but I don't think I've got time. This will be the time, really, to summarise on the day's fishing. I need tightening up a little bit, that elastic, but... I'll keep that rig down. So it's all about feeding accurately with the pole cup. Picking where you're fishing, the distance out where you're fishing, so you're holding the pole at the same length. Cupping in the ground bait, the, the meat, which is a, a type of, we call it ground bait, but it's a loose meat, so it goes to the bottom. And then fishing on it. And immediately there's a bite, just a little touch as a fish around. I think already the bait I put in is, is already disappearing. As the fish take it. You can soon tell when, you've, when you need to feed again. You usually perhaps start catching an odd smaller fish. Maybe a small skimmer or, oh, that's it again. Just as I dropped it down, it was away. Lovely, so just perfect example of how to catch fish on meat. Feeding accurately, fishing on the bottom. Another one of these beautiful, beautiful F1s. What a fabulous way to just keep catching fish. A few tins of meat, cut it up. If you haven't got a meat cutter, you can use a, a normal knife and just cut it, it just takes longer. I just love to use that meat cutter. Oh, yeah, another one of these. Really, these are terrific fish. The bite was almost instant, dropping it in on that feed area. They love it. They're really round feeding, and it gets better and better. And if, if you fish, at, as I said, late into the evening, then you start usually to catch the bigger carp, start to creep in. But even that's sort of a, a pound and a half, two pound fish anyway. It's a big fish. You really have to grip them tightly. Just hook down inside the mouth. And the hook just, just came out as easy as anything with that slamo. There you are. Fantastic pole fishing with me.